let's talk about music. I'm me, and I'm a musician, I'm a composer. I've been doing so for over 14 years, as my closest person has told me. Um, but I'm not a professional, and yet I have strong opinions about music, and how it's produced, and how people listen to it. So I'm here to talk about one problem that I see in modern music today. It's the lack of diversity in popular music. The problem isn't that music that's popular is popular. That's not the problem. The problem is that it overshadows those that make less popular music. That sounds pretty obvious. But the thing is, there's a lack of diversity because there's this overshadowing. There's so many artists out there that want to make different kinds of music, different kinds of creative ideas, but they're unable to because of monetary reasons or because they're simply not popular enough to sustain their job. So I'm here to promote the diversity of music. But let's first understand what is the diversity of music. Now, diversity in art is always important. We want something new, something fresh, new ideas. We don't want it to become stale. So let's look at what specifically diversity means in music. It's groundbreaking. Now, that sounds pretty obvious again. But what this means here is music that's new, so new sounds, new instruments, new techniques, new styles, new structures, new artists too. And in these ways you get music that's diverse. Now inherently, from your own perspective, from your own country, you're going to have diverse music at your fingertips simply because we have the internet and we're becoming more globalized. Because music outside of your own country is going to naturally be diverse. Because in every country music is de uh, developed in different ways and in, in unique ways such that music is diverse. So, how do we actually promote the diversity? <clears throat> See, I'm speaking from the perspective of the musicians. You're the listeners. Well, I'm sure there are a bunch of uh, other musicians out there too. But, from a listener, there's actually a simple way you can promote diversity in music. And as mentioned earlier, it's active listening. Now, it sounds kind of lame, I did put active in front of what we always do every day, no matter what. But there's a reason why I put that active in there. See, a lot of the time, we listen to music in the background. We do it while doing uh, homework, or running, or exercising, or anything, really. Instead of doing that, just listen. Don't do anything else. See, one tip I got a long time ago is just sit down, pick up your headphones, close your eyes, and listen to your favorite piece. Now, here's where the important part starts. When you're sitting there listening, look for what you like about it. Look for the techniques. Look for the instruments. Look for the individual sounds. For example, water drops have been used in music recently. It's really cool, but no one has done it for quite a while. So listen to these individual techniques that you like. Keep them in your head. And then explore. See, remember those, and then put them into that YouTube search bar. Say like you like that uh, Japanese, like the plucky thing in Japanese tradition music. Say like it's a shamisen. And you also like this subgenre of electronic music called, say, woodchop. So just type in shamisen woodchop into YouTube, and I can get, guarantee you'll get at least five, at least five pieces that will sound like that. That's one simple way to do it. But also remember that you know, in, at the advent of improving technology, we also have services like Apple Music and Spotify that actually give you recommended artists, so it's becoming more, uh, a lot easier. But try to do it without using these services. Try to look for what you specifically like. Because when you do this, you see, when you do this, these techniques that these composers use, they're in many other pieces too. They're not individual. So when you actively seek for them, you're going to be promoting those that actually use that technique. So you're going to be promoting Japanese music when you actually listen to something that has Japanese instruments in it, even though it wasn't made by a Japanese person. Similarly, if you use, say, I don't know, Indian music, and then you like the specific artist, say, Kashmir, who's a pretty important uh, Indian electronic music producer, you're going to be promoting his culture as well as also electronic music. So, but again, I mentioned this, that I'm talking from sort of the perspective of the composer. Now let me show you that indeed composers use these techniques because otherwise this active listening concept wouldn't even work. So 
Here's one of my home pieces. I've been working on this, it's not done. And it sounds like your stereotypical trap music kind of thing. I mean, it's electronic music, I produce. So, here we go. <laughs> That's just the drop, okay? So that's you know when you build up and then you do this really cool thing and all the time It's the standard these days. Um, let me just solo out a specific part of that. I'm just gonna solo out one, uh, two instruments there. Now, that might sound really strange to you. Those are, in fact, they, they might sound like or metallic pots or something that you might find in the kitchen. In fact, they are. See, how was it, how, I was inspired to do this kind of thing through active listening. I was listening to Caribbean music. Um, that's a steel pan right there. Uh, and the idea is that, not the fact that they used a the steel pan, but the sound that it made and how I realized that you can make music out of any object you find. <coughs> now, I learned this before the ads and goes, you know. YouTube videos that I, famous YouTubers that like make music out of anything, so like Last Cup Squeak and Snips, all these kind of things. So it was kind of like a big mind blow to me. But I had, that was the time when I was making composing, so it's kind of a recent development for me. So I took this idea of using any instrument, and then I went to the kitchen, and I was like, you know, what's cool in here? And I picked up the frying pan, and because I'm a percussionist, I picked up the stick, and I was like, bang, 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 boom, I don't know the sound. <laughs> And then I sampled it, and then I modulated the pitch, and that's what you get, that previous job. And that's not the only part of it in that uh, specific segment. Let's look at the, the melodic structure. You see, be popular music these days, and not, I don't want to generalize too much, but a lot of it is relying on specific chord progressions and keys and all that kind of stuff. Back, in, uh, a, long, back a long time ago, there was a movement like this in a way. It was. Did you hear that? Do, 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 do. That's going outside of that structure. And that movement was in the Romantic period, and that concept is called chromaticism. That's so using every single note in the 12, uh, 12 tone system. Uh, musicians would probably recognize that um, as kind of weird. But also, it's prevalent in, in, in like, say, music of Tchaikovsky. And I was specifically inspired to do this from this track. Ride of the Valkyries uh, by Bonnie. And that specific moment kind of blew my mind. It's like, wait, you can do that? I thought this was in, like, I don't know, something major, minor, right? Well, you can. And guess what? I did it as a reaction sort of against the modernized, modern, standardized kind of style that we have in popular music. So now you know. We really do use these techniques in modern music. And as a composer, I'm compelled to tell you that please look, look out for them. You know, I'm also happy, as anyone is, for you to listen to my music in the background while writing, while exercising, while reading the book, while watching the movie, while listening to other music. But in the end, we want our music to be sort of appreciated, right? And as artists, we need our audience. So, the next time you listen to something that you like, analyze why you like it. Put the headphones on, close your eyes, and listen. Don't do anything else. Thank you.